kita barusan tadi breakfast uh, sekarang lagi mau menuju ke studio di mana kita akan bertanding melawan Popeyes nanti jam 1 waktu Indonesia Barat uh, sekarang lagi nunggu nunggu Ilok Joseph uh, sama sama Baim lagi di atas lagi beres-beres habis itu kita bakal jalan ke studio langsung ada briefing nanti bakal ketemu tim Infinity dan sama caster-caster world lah itu ada X X Kun X apa X X Kun Trio sama Jauzi nah terus habis itu kita jam jam satu akan bertanding. Eh, tapi belum mau jaket hoki ya? Eh, mau, mau ke meja ya? Orang kemarin disuruh Pas lah, tapi hoki lah, bener mau ke meja Untung gua gak bawa yang stripe, itu yang hoki Yang garis-garis katanya Kalo garis-garis katanya gak bisa Efe nah, green skin-nya nah, green skin. kacau Lu analisisnya sama siapa? Orang Filipin sini ya? Oh, bukan orang luar ya? Yang Daniel Gak, yang... Ya, Daniel Iya, emang udah main fan gue lama? Dia tahu. Hey, I'm Lex. I'm Lex. You know, I'm the I'm Lord Player. I'm Lex going to the town. I'm Lex. <laughs> Toko lo gila lo ada. Seberapa yakin hari ini? 100% yakin menang. Lawannya? Popeyes. Easy peasy. We must eat spinach ya. Hah? Bayam, bayam. Maybe hari ini mereka kehilangan bayarnya ya. Kenapa mereka juga datang sih? Karena mereka takut lihat-lihat lihat wajah-wajah kita kita. Mungkin karena kita terlalu hebat ya. Bisa Jadi jadi mereka nggak datang. Bisa. Tapi sih nggak nyangka sih Popeyes bisa bisa datang sini sih. Kemudian bisa masuk ke semifinal sih. Dari yang nggak ekspektasi aja, tapi ya oke okay lah. Jadi kita beruntung lah uh, untuk uh, menuju ke final oh, itu oke okay lah. Oh, stop. Stop. Jadi menuju final itu ya lumayan lebih gampang lah. Ini momen kita untuk menuju world lah sekarang kan. Kita nggak boleh remen juga tetap. Kita tetap harus bermain sebagus mungkin dan serapi mungkin lah. Jangan terlalu seperti kekalahan infamous lah. Mereka terlalu di, di saat apa sih mereka udah unggul. Board. Although Lance is technically considered bad against Catherine because Catherine can uh, stun during the impale animation, it's not the prime target that you want to hit, so I always don't mind Lance into Catherine. Finn works just as well, both super heavy peel captains, what we talked about, add that extra element of peel to stop the Catherine sure. getting space attack, right? Yeah. So it, it generates that on hit damage straight away, I and mean, it's obviously a fantastic uh, ability to be able to use in that situation. Teams are in the lobby nearly ready to go as far as I can see, so hopefully going to get this straight in the way. We'll have a blind. Silence Dark Turret should go down and it does, but now Elite 8 in trouble. They're going to get pulled back in. There's the Afterburn, that's going to be a uh, hunt going down. First blood goes to Popeyes, and now they put to Yeah, and again, the mountain gone down, the Crucible's gone down, and suddenly Popeyes got plenty of opportunity to just siege onto this turret. It should be an easy trade back and forth for them. They're trying to put pressure onto this left team, and they are going back in. They're trying to fight here, but. Going down. In fact, it's going to be Catherine going down. 
so it's a little bit effective, but if you have those little shots in your, your quiver, you can still fire the ball. This is a very interesting run game. You can say about the third, no defense. There's the arm, the third, they're going to try and get off to Aeon. Come to the pressure now, but a bit behind. Fate just go down to the AP. Reflex block gets the hill. Arm defense goes out, and there it is. Three numbers, two late. He goes down a bit too far to that. Two kills. This should be the ace and the wipe as Ilov goes down. A double. Eight. It's going to go down to very close. It's going to be a big contest, perhaps even a steal. Ilov going to come so in close. just immediately in. There is the shielding, and it looks like they're just going to fight here. Elite A, Mr. Spartan has to up defensively knocks Ilov back, but they're going to continue charging forward. So much damage has been done, but it's being portrayed straight on back. There's the one shot coming through, blocked up by Ilov. Tezzerboy will find the kill, but may go down the process, as it looks like Elite 8 has to fall back. Water Corn, that's huge! That's going to be a trade. Oh, it's Black Feather! Official Hines going for more! Oh, it's a one versus one. The junglers versus junglers, but Official Hines has no HP. He's going to have to run, and he cannot run. Looking to one versus three. Keep the dream alive, but he goes down. This is a spark. 7 0 5, and it's just Ilov left. Tyrus destroyed. Main Crystal focused. Popeye to game one of this semi final series against the main game. Incredible game from Popeyes. I thought they had a really good draft phase coming in. They thought that they thought about it a lot. The draft made a lot of sense about what they saw against uh, the Elite Eight. And I've got to say, there was a couple of positions. And Jagers. I, I just miss IGN because when it, Han Jagger is me hunting the viral. Uh, my IGN is Ovisha Hain. My agent is Arlock. Uh, I choose the name because uh, before the, I, I play the mobile game, I choose from the beginning the name. So I choose them. Uh, the biggest challenge is uh, maybe we, we are just a new team in this season. But semua penonton dan fans gue, kalian bisa kok kayak gue. Asal kalian uh, rajin terus usaha dan latih kelas keras. Uh, kenapa? Uh, saya apa tuh itu maksudnya uh, gue nggak ngerasa tertekan sih sebenarnya sih uh, cuman gue jarang latihan doang sama tim gue tapi uh, selama ada leader atau captain yang bisa ngelit gue uh, harusnya sih aman sih sama sampai semifinal ini sih. Church of Baron has made it round okay. to the SEA door. Have you heard about update 2.4 Baron? He says. Our, our Lord SEA, and Savior Baron. Our Lord and Savior Baron and SEA. In the first game, I thought maybe they hadn't heard, but it looks like they have been indoctrin indoctrinated. Indo I can't even say the word. Indoctrinated as the rest of the world has. Baron comes through here for Popeye. Incredibly strong. And it's going to be, like we talked about at the very start of the broadcast, it's actually going to be Captain Glaive coming through as well. Unless this is Captain Samuel, but I very much doubt that, given that he's just infinitely better it's in the jungle. It's who played it. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it was Mowgli that played it at Worlds. Yeah. Yes. So it's it's not impossible. It's very unlikely, though. Expect uh, going to be... Uh, I mean, I, I had I had a, a monotone or monologuing rage fit about Captain Samuel. Okay. But I'm not going to do it again now, so it's probably not going to be that case. Sky comes through here, so that will be again a weapon power test for the lane. And it is going to be Arden for the captain role. It's something that we know that Elite 8 likes to play. We know that Elite 8 likes to play Arden. They've got a very good Arden composition as well. Two heroes that do like mobility. You add a little bit more mobility on top of the role. I look, sometimes... I, I, I don't like to put it a dead meat Darcy. I like to put it a retro Anything that is uncool now, I just say retro for an old dude. Right, you just feel like... Well, dude, I am an old dude, and I can say... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm an antique dude. Antique dude. Uh, away, but uh, it is a pretty, pretty big game. Looks like they're going for a kill, though. Official high may out of position. Series strikes away, but the mouse verdict is there. One more auto-tap to fight, and Mr. Spider wants it. That's going to be first blood going to Mr. Spider once more. But Ken has always survived the on barrage coming from this chest wall. Popeye's gonna charge forward, they're gonna go for the kill, they've split their damage, and Lop goes very low, Han Jaeger should go down, he does, that's a kill going over to Aeon, 2 for O, so oh, a minute. very aggressive, Aeon gonna dive forward, that's a lot of damage, that's him going down immediately, no follow up, comes out and can't really afford to be the front line as a Baron, very heavily forward, but actually that could favor them if they go for a fight here, Mitchell Hyen trying to lay down some damage with that forward barrage, Ilop needs to land the gauntlet onto a 3 
there. The priority target, but it's not really going for it, just kind of taking up damage. Oh, wow. Good afterburn. That's a short high knockdown position. Oblivion comes down. That's going to put asleep. Hunt Jaegers. Oh, it's gone terrible. I lost last man alive, and he should go down. Jumps into the bush, tries to kill himself up, but there's the jump jet set. The kill goes over. Another ace. That's huge. You might be able to knock down to completely destroy him. This is part of being a huge hope. Oh, that's great. Gorn that locks everyone in place. Looking to try and follow up, and an official high just laying down the herd. Hunt Jaegers goes low, but then the crit. There we go. There we go. Elite A looking to finish. Finish this one up. Tezza Boy with an afterburn in five seconds. Will really? nice be they have to disengage. It's gonna be Tezza Boy oh, going in. What was that damage? Official Hines gets bursted, but some manages to survive. Looking to continue poking at range. Ao for a flying crew. Maybe just going to push the lane down and jump around from behind. Let's we'll try and go for official Hines. Oh, he's got a jump jet. It's gonna be official Hines going down. There it is. 500 strong. Oh, they want to go to the team again. Ooh, official Hines afterburns into the fight. Death from above's gonna come down. The log damage being pulled out. And then he's oh, oh, up, but oh, 600. On the crit, and that's the visual line to go in the front line. He's taking a huge damage. Hung Yeager's reposition does get up into the wall. There's the up bend. Uh, sorry, the uh, ball and Hung Yeager's manages to escape with his life. I lost the car fed the same about him. He will go down. Bracket still there. Hung Yeager's looking for the pressure. Special Hines only just respawning, but this will be Bracket. Very likely going over. The one shot won't quite find a kill. Now, Bracket once more. This is looking very disastrous for me. Hey, as Bracket is pushing in. Popeyes looking for the second game win. Hines kind of goes down and Visual Hines once more knocked out of position. He's getting blasted on down for the second one. Maybe it be enough. Turret goes down. Hylon puts his sleep, but Popeyes are getting ready to take the second turret. Tether Boy is very low, but has found an available to look at the damage he played on down. The crack is very, very good. It's not going to run down. There it is. All the land has been started. They just need to take him out immediately. Jump jet defensively. Hylon does push forward. Great. Oh. Oblivion puts two to sleep. Official Hines in trouble. He will go down. Oh, lock gonna go down very low as well as the jump jets come through. Hunt Jaegers goes in fears. He's trying to turn the damage. He finds the kill. Can he get the return? No, Tezza Boy will go down. Ilog finds the kill. That's the ace coming through. And this could just be Popeyes pushing for their second win. Yeah, that was so close for Elite Eight. They had the right moves. They took it at the right time, but unfortunately got split by the Oblivion. And not only that, Hunt Jaegers somehow blocked the healing camp. He got rooted. He was unable to move and then capitalize on that Samuel that was taken to such low HP. It was a good gauntlet from Mylock. Finally, you saw them do so much damage to the Samuel, but then Official Hines split himself off, Oblivion broke up the team, and then eventually J Baron just did what Baron did best. Completely wiped out. If Honigas hadn't... Arden is something that we know that Ilok likes to play. It makes that means that Celeste doesn't have that level of protection. And now Ilok might be might be forced into something like a Lance, which is exactly what he picks. So therefore the Lance comes out. I think that is the most um, agreeable pick into an Arden, to be honest. You have plenty of ways to look to counter the Lance, and there's a lot of appeal coming through with the Gitty Ball. So do like the Lance pick up here. And to round the composition out, I think you're actually gonna need a jungler that can somehow duel, duel up as some sort of peeling machine for this Celeste. So what do you think would be uh, an ideal pickup here for the juggle. There's plenty of weapon power picks. We sometimes see cool. Yeah, yeah, cool. I, think, I think cool would be pretty good. Yeah, just to try and do damage, but it's going to be an alpha, so that's very interesting. It's very likely to be a weapon power alpha in the jungle. Yeah, that's interesting because weapon power alpha doesn't usually get seen in combat. We're only ever really seen crystal power alpha. Although weapon power alpha does work. So I think it's pretty good against it to a Kessel as well. Although admittedly, I just feel like it's the lesser of the two power values in terms of the two particular jugglers. Now we're waiting for the final pick of Popeye's here. It's going to be hard, and if I'm just sticking the Kessel in the jungle, I might think about the Black Feather in the lane. You have the option for Taka. I do feel like Taka or Black Feather would be fine, but they are going to go. I guess the question on our minds is down to Is Elite 8 going to be bewitched in this game, or can they start pouring their way back into this series? It is game. Three of this series.
Ladies and scoundrel, Popeye's one away from making their way into the finals from Challenge. to have a lock on target to allow Sky to get to the back line. And when Sky gets to the back line, maybe they can pressure the Celestia. The major issue with that fight is again, Jessica the Bell was on the wrong side of the fight. There was no energy on the onset. was able to use those good shots. Although that's a big death of the bar, huge damage coming down. Official Hind is trying to pop that termination protocol. One shot comes out. Official Hind just looking to heal. Solar Storm. At this point in time, the uh, fountain is still available, by the way, for Popeye. So if this is a potential mistake for Elay to try and go in here, looks like Mr. I'm going to hand over to Dalsy as he's actually just writing something, so I'm going to take it over. Actually, Mr. Spartan here is actually have to back away. The fountain has been used. They were very low at this point in time. And the healing count. Communication, so <laughs> doing things a little bit old school. That's going to be the gold mine going over to Elite 8 as they look to take it further. Tether Boy in the wrong place, wrong time. And he's going to go down to that long range auto attack. You know, Sky might have not been the best option. Right. No, I, I'm with you. And this is something that you discussed, is that he ate on Sky. But here it is, Mr. Spartan getting just destroyed. As that's going to be another kill going over. Good active camo, they just disengage the fight for now. Solar Storm is ready and rearing to go. If Aeon catches a glimpse of that, that could just destroy him. But currently, it's just this turret being focused down. Not enough energy on Hunting Angels to throw out that ultimate. But the turret will fall, and they're looking to try and get Tezzer as well. And Solar Storm through Tezzer Boy for the century. In fact, they found official Hive all by himself. This is fun, I'm sorry. They could just look to take this guy away. He's trying to dance around, find the kill on the island. That's a crucial attack. Try and find more. Prime Director doesn't hit. He's actually being followed on down by Hunter Yeager. There it is. One Elo Genesis. Three Hunter is coming away. No, it's not. The scary duo of the Alpha and the Celeste is about to chase it down. That crossbow means it's going to be very difficult to escape. Oh, Tezza Boy just cannot escape. That Prime Directive lands straight on top of Aeon and he forces the fountain out of them. Tezza Boy will lose his life and Aeon, well, he's in a bit of a trouble as well. Has to. Ilok, who has played very well on the lands, he said you've got to see a guy hitting his impale, he's got to be hitting his skill shots, and he has done. He's been setting things up and peeling very nicely. Oh, man. Popeyes, they push forward for the turret, but they're not even going to get it. Gauntlet does catch Han Jaegers. He's in the depth from above. He's taking a lot of damage. Oh, that's a lot of, that's damage. a lot of damage. They may be able to fight if they do. Han Jaegers goes down, but Mr. Spartan, he's in the midst of it, and official Hind will find the kill now. Looking for Aeon. Bit of a drift trap. They're just going to try and get on. Oh, Prime Directive to the face. Tezza Boy, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. He's going to fall very, very quickly. And the Ace comes through. A triple for official Hind. They're going to march over to the Kraken and look to take the beast. The problem is that you just can't invest enough gold at this point in time because you need to keep up with infusions. So you're never getting enough gold as Mr. Spartan to get towards your broken myth. And at this point in time, you've got a broken myth on official Hind. He's had it for ages. So if you need him to build broken myth stacks when you're trying to focus the select, he's going to rip up the team. Another key factor, by the way, Tezzerboy didn't have Fountain for that fight. And the Fountain only came through as Festival died. So Eon died when Fountain actually reset and came up. So there was no way it was an absolutely pitch perfect pinpoint of good with a competition that allows them to make decisions in the early game. This competition, I don't think, offers many decisions to be made. It kind of just feels like you, you cut from distance, you use the gaunt to speak the team and try and look for a, a black with sky. It doesn't feel like that, that has been playing to Popeye's strength, which I think has been mechanical, intensive engages, where they can try and punish mistakes from the opponent. There isn't really any punishment on the Popeye team, especially not pre-6. Yeah, this is it. Elite 8 now looking for the win as they are getting onto this last vein Crystal Turret. Official high and termination protocol straight onto Aeon. Kaboom! Down! Dead! And Game 3 will go to Elite 8. They managed to fight back the ban on the Glaive, the Celeste, for this team. Hey everyone, welcome to Vainglory C Finals and we're at BGC, the newest Globe Studio. This is so big and so spacious. New games and new prizes for everyone. And we're gonna go check out the studio because uh, I think the staff are preparing for the next match. So, let's go. Actually, we can see the staff preparing for the next match. So it's so big and so awesome. Actually, on my left side, they're the casters. Ex Scoundrel and Dowsy. I'm gonna go there to interview them, so let's go. Hey guys! Hey! hey. How, you doing? <laughs> How you doing? Actually, I'm gonna let you hold the mic because they need to hear that. There's a really big mic. It's cool. So, how are you guys? Yeah, we're good. Very good. This is the first time here in the Philippines. You guys, first time? Yeah, yeah, this is my first time in the Philippines. Yeah. Uh, yeah it's my first time in Southeast Asia at all. So. Yeah. So. And I heard you guys had 14 hours flight. Yeah, we flew from Heathrow on Thursday 
Um, got here last night. Got here last night. Uh, I got to explore Manila a little bit. But it's I went to bed. Where, where did you go? Where did you go? goes from me. Um, it's been a pleasure uh, being here in the Philippines. Everyone's been very welcoming and uh, can't wait to see who wins. Yes. So that's it guys for the interview and I'll catch you later. Ciao! In North America and EU where we uh, often see Samuel played in the jungle, it could very much be a Samuel play. Absolutely. But then again, it could be Samuel Jungle, Gwen Ling, which would give them a lot of early game presence. They can pressure with a tension bow. They've got great siege as well. That would be a, not a bad draft actually. I wouldn't be half... Uh, Disappointed if they did with that drop. We're looking for two Popeyes final round out here. Now starting to eat up into their bonus time. They're looking for a jungler here. Something to pair up with the box. CP jungler at this point in time. They can consider the Alpha because of the Samuel. They can consider the Koshka for a little bit of early presence against the Samuel or the Taka. They're going to go with Sky. SNA really does love their Sky. So, Sky gives them a lot of mobility. Gives them a lot of protection as well. With Death Bar helping with the box. And also, Tension bow on the Gwen. Well, guys, this is it. Game four here. Onto the Halcyon fold we go. Elite eight looking to start up that reverse sweep. They need to take this game four to even be in consideration for a team. Popeyes just one away. They have been one away for two games now. So this is the Lyra and the Gwen get punished in lane fairly heavily already. Like Popeyes trying their best here. Better smart takes a lot of damage. Oh, whoa, first one. There it is. That is the buck shot. Combination and uh, our last attack comes out of my locker. Now the second tier two turret is under fire. The H should be able to take this away. A walk in the park for them. Their siege comp just doing so much work and it does go down. Wait for it. Ooh, that's a huge poke of damage. My lock goes down as well. It's a double kill for Aeon. And maybe they may have just bit off more than they could chew. Officially spent damage output there, so we do have to be worried. I think reflex blocks should be considered, and you can see official time and oh. Jaegers both going for a reflex block, but here we go. Yeah, look at the frost there just doing work. Good night, Tezza boy. Bursted on down by Hun Jaegers, who is just a sway. So now the stacking game for the Gwen can begin as they start to focus this front line here. They even look for the fight now as they're looking to try and catch someone out. For that ace is high onto a prime target. Tesla Boy's gonna dive right in. Pibble lands onto the Samuel. Wait for it goes out, but they're just not doing work. That's a huge ace is high. Going by Aeon. He just gets annihilated. Looking for the damage is this guy. She finds the kill, but can she find any more? Mr. Sparks is at this back pushes. And the visual high looking for the kill. Balance the verdict and auto attack. Done so. And Tesla Boy will go down for the double. And the ace of the uh, Sweet here. They seem to have found the match. Premium, which is back play. So we were saying right at the start. There's a cripple, it's a big one. Here yeah, we go. Wait for it in the corridor. They've tried to dump Hunt Yeager's death from above. They're not going to do work. Oh, Aeon yeah. by Kent on Aeon. The first comes through. He gets destroyed. Double for you. A triple for Hunt Yeager's. Screw the bracket. Let's end now. Let's end now. We need Hunt Yeager's with this build pack design specifically to blow people up. And he just blew that box off the face of the Halcyon Fold. Uh, in that second pick, then a Tucker comes out yeah. now and just immediately counters it. The strength of B side is that you can hide that Samuel to last when you know he's going to be nice and safe. Yeah, so, and that's the strange thing. Baron Sky comes over for Elite Eight. They've taken away two priority picks from Team Popeyes now. And where do Team Popeyes go? They do not have a premier weapon power carry in the lane. Well, they can't pick something like a Koshka or a Tucker or they have to pick an Ringo. Alpha. They have to pick Ringo. Yeah. Oh, I mean, unless they want to go double CP and stick Samuel in the lane. Kestrel. Oh, Kestrel, I suppose. Forget about Kestrel. Final place this time round is pressure from very early on. And kind of do a reverse of what we saw in the last game of the game. They just need to take that pressure earlier, probably. This is it. 
Game 5, the final of the semi-final series here in Southeast Asia. One of these teams will progress to the finals tomorrow. The other will fall down to that third. Oh, the range of the river shot. Again, they do have the ability to put the pressure on the VK. They do have the afterburn. They can sort of punish positioning errors here from like this. Oh, that is good afterburn, but not much follow-up. Definitely Bob's going to hold him real back, but Fisher Heinz going very low. Now trying to escape. Now comes out. Jump Jets not going to quite find the damage. Now Hunt is getting split for this team as Ilon and Official Heinz going to get pushed off back. That's first blood going over to Mr. Spartan, and he finds a Malice Verdict. Not his age should be thinking about fighting. Yeah, Hunt Yeager's been completely caught out here. Something to note was Aeon just before this fight uh, started. It's often when you see both North American and European teams do, because they control the fight very well. Fight breaking out here is Hunt Yeager's going to take a bit of damage. Iron Cannon going to land on Mr. Spartan. Oh, good move! What goes the Iron Cannon? And he just gets destroyed. Kill credit over to the better position. As I say that though, Hunt Yeager's does get split. That's going to be an Iron Cannon. We'll land onto a couple, but they just don't care. He's going to get to... Oh, Popeyes, they managed to get that. Potentially even get the gold mine off top of this as well. He'll be up to official fine to potentially do something about this again. Popeyes not protecting it, trying to zone off with that. Uh, here we go. Oh, they steal the hurt. Now looking for the kills. Look at the health bars. Everyone, Popeyes low, but they have to commit to one target here. And it looks like Tezza Boy is going to be the sacrifice. Popeyes will leave him to die, and that's going to be another kill going out. 800 gold in the bank. Here we go, another fight. Another fight. Mr. Spartan taking so much damage. Deborah Bob going to split the team. Mr. Spartan struggling, and he will fall to Hunt Yeager. There's going to be the Iron Cannon straight away. It's going to force them to disengage, and Aeon will just get caught up. No! He manages to survive. They take down Hunt Yeager. Now the chase for this catch will begin, but he's already made the distance. He's going to recall. Mr. Hyatt over the wall. He's going to find the Gatling gun for the kill. He's going to look for it's going to be a shot, misses the first, and that's going to be a trade in the end. The auto team is going to be to about 3,500. Now, Aeon taking a huge chunk of poke. They're going to look for the engage here. Afterburn knocks Aeon out. Tezza Boy on the front line, just stacking up that broken bit for official Hines. Popeye's trying to escape. They have that fountain, but Tezza Boy's going to be having to use it on himself. Glimmer shots, finding the distance. Oblivion will not connect. They managed to dodge everything, and Hunt Yeager is untouched. Can he find the kills? Jumps forward, but it's going to be a disaster for Elite Eight. They lose two. Official Hine, where is he going? But only to death and ace for team. Oh, they're popping, they're popping their movement speed to make this happen. Yeah, they're going to try and get on in, try and get onto the fight. Hunt Yeager is going to use the jump jets back. That's going to be Ilog diving on in, but he hits Tezza Boy. Mr. Spartan in the depth of the bomb, but he's sustaining the even pumps to work. Hunt Yeager's hit off the one shot. Boom, he goes down. And that's going to be an elite eight now trying to escape. Official Hine trying his best to play. Mr. Spartan at this point in time, they've all invested in a bit, a bit of armor, and you're not at that late game stage, the four items not yet completed upon Jaegers. Look at this though, Sky doing exactly what she did against the gold mine, forcing the Popeye Locker away. They're going to start, wow, the eight are just starting this up. Iron Cannon almost takes out Mr. Spartan from range. Elite 8, they're just taking the crack in. There's nothing Popeyes can do about it. They're going to give it up to Elite 8. Again, the Iron Cannon stop the back. Still at two thirds of health now, it's down. The uh, sustain from Mr. Spartan is insane, by the way. Single handedly with that coat of face keeping alive. We've got another fight that's aggressive. Wow, Hunt Yeager's in the middle of it, gonna jump back out. He's taking so much damage and he's going to fall. It's a trade. The captain for the carry. But at the moment, Elite 8 happy to make that trade. This Kraken will go down, but it's gonna take a turret with it. I don't think Ilog gets out alive. He doesn't have the energy for an afterburn, so cannot escape over the wall. But it's all been. They are behind in terms of the dueling potential, but. I would like to see Hanegas be a little less aggressive. <laughs> Forced to call, gonna pull him in, maybe not now. He tries to jump away, Oblivion goes out. Iron Cannon gonna disengage the fight, actually does a bit of damage. Tessa Boy, he's going very low, he's gonna get slowed on down. And he's gonna go into the quibble. Official high going low, and he gets taken down. Tessa Boy's still alive. Now he goes just trying to do the damage. Finds Aeon on the side, kaboom, 500. Oh no, Mr. Spartan knocks against the wall. Tries to balance the third, trying to escape with the crit damage. It's just too much. Can they do it? Double one to attack this. Spartan, he survives, and it's just Ilok and Tezza Boy left to duel it out. Except it's not a duel, it is a quibble, it is polite company. Tezza Boy looking for the 1v1, but Ilok's having none of it. He doesn't have the energy to escape, he 
is going down eventually you would think Why company keeps it together somehow is staying alive but the quibble should secure it one more he's not gonna get this i don't think he's got, got five seconds the sky comes up it's not the edge it's still hard to get through if you don't have any armor shred and the aeon's really already target yeah it's a boy as well can give that armor over with the flight company that is so much armor force support got a cool official mine in but he escapes away look at ilog in the middle and oh he's gonna, he just flies to the damage that's gonna be a kaboomie Mr. Spartan, he's nowhere near, gets away from this, surely, maybe I say too soon, as the even harvest is doing work, gets up to get the wall, Ted's boy gonna go lower, Mr. Spartan, he is caught between everyone, Elite 8 double kill, and an ace, that is the extended triple kill, and now they're looking to finish this, one turret between them, and a finals for Elite 8, can you say reverse sweep, I certainly can, Elite 8 take the series, Elite 8, so this fantastic, in the way that they managed to adapt mid-series. They realized that the Glaive was an issue. They started playing compositions that took away the proactiveness that we saw from Popeyes in the early game. I think Popeyes could have drafted very differently, personally. Sure. I think they could have taken Lance and they would have actually been able to play to their strengths, but they didn't. First team killed Popeyes. And who would have known that you guys, unfortunately dropping the first two games, getting the last three? How do you guys feel? surprised by uh, Popeye's performance for the first two games. We didn't expect that they're going to play that well uh, and their, their uh, chemistry is pretty good with the, game comp, with the field comp. So how did your team adjust to Popeye's after the first three games? What do you feel like was your problem and how did you fix it? Uh, we decided to ban uh, Glaive or, t uh, or Pete Glaive. Uh, so that we, we know that they're going to play a double double range comp. Uh, that's how we, we beat them. Okay, so you guys, you've made it to the grand finals tomorrow. Do you have anything to say to your fans at home after making it thus far? Aduh gila, tadi Pascal itu 2-0 itu udah bener-bener pusing sih. Cuman, untung aja si leader gue itu hebat lah. Dia bisa kasih gue, maksudnya itu motivasi buat kita orang berjuga jangan menyerah jangan takut loh yang penting coba aja kalau misalnya itu keputusan suatu leader itu pengaruh besar di satu tim sih jadi kalau bisa lu harusnya kalau sebagai leader tuh harusnya motivasi tim bukan bukan malah bikin jadi down dan karena itulah kita bisa si game ke tiga empat lima itu kita bercemestri bertiga lah dan kita benar-benar benar apa sih fokus sama game doang yang penting uh, mulai game, langsung main, jangan ngeblank orang lain dulu, orang lain dulu. Kenapa lu kita kalah, jangan ngeblank. Tapi kita fokus pada tujuannya sih, menang dan menang dan menang. Udah itu aja sih. Dan yang pasti gue happy banget hari ini. Dari 2-0 dan gue pemain lama, uh, udah lama ngemain sama mereka di gue bertiga, bukan main booster, substitution. Uh, tapi ya, kita bisa buktiin juga, maksudnya gue yang pemain lama juga bisa sampai ke pihak ini ya, gak ada salahnya sih, cuman gue lebih percaya mereka ketika yang main. Gue lebih percaya hentai lebih buka sih kalau gue. Next, next, dia harus jadi yang terbaik, melebihi lebih kemampuan gue juga, sampai lebih, 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 dan mencapai peringkat-peringkat uh, banyak lah di dunia ini. Good luck for era 1, for the next, next, next season. Gimana? Udah buktiin best less? <laughs> no death ya? Eh? Apa komentarnya apa? Watch and learn it. Kalau dilihat tadi kenapa game satu game dua bisa kalah? Game satu faktor draft ya kita draftnya kurang bagus, tidak kurang tak mengantisipasi. Fin, karena ke, dengan Fin mereka punya feel dan uh, punya potensi buat castle-nya, jadi uh, kita nggak bisa ngebers uh, castle-nya. Awalnya memang rencana untuk fokus untuk fokus ke castle lah aja. Habis itu belief-nya bisa dihandle. Terus juga ada kesalahan build. Uh, awalnya gue BL mau beli set emas, tapi kepencet uh, breaking point, jadi nggak ada damage awal, jadi nggak ada sustain.